In today's episode, we go back to 2010, when the man dubbed London's most corrupt policeman was sent down in the longest ever sentence for police corruption. PC Masoud Caracas and a number of accomplices were convicted of plotting a crime that was disturbing as it was audacious. The plan was to snatch a bank manager right in front of his family and force him to give them access to money. PC Masoud Caracas, who was 23 years old, was ringleader of the gang, which planned to snatch and torture a bank manager and his wife in hope of stealing £100,000. We look at the Directorate of Professional Standards, the DPS, or nicknamed the Ghost Squad by the police. Trapped London's most corrupt policeman after a string of allegations by planting a listening device in his car. Police was aware of police grasses and informants that Masoud Caracas was attempting to kidnap a Lloyd's TSB bank manager in front of his family and force him to hand over cash. Such was a worry for the Met. Police grasses and informants were kept off computer systems. They had designated handlers and nothing was to be entered onto computer systems. The bug planted on Caracas's car revealed every detail of the plot and police moved in on his gang before they arrived at the bank manager's house. They were even heard discussing TV series The Wire and The Golden Rule not to openly talk about their plans, but they still did. The force this day still remains baffled to why Caracas went bad. DPS detectives said in their report he was a uniformed officer, a beat officer, and he moved around a couple of stations, ending at Greenwich. There was nothing about him. He was polite and helpful. He was not a truly exceptional officer. Pretty much your average police officer. By 24 years old, Caracas had served four years as a PC, but was already suspected of links to two major drug dealers and Turkish organised crime in London. Doubts were raised in 2007, when the suspicions he had injured himself with scissors to frame a suspect. Then he and his gang launched a serious baseball bat attack on a man outside a pub in Islington. The victim was left with life-changing injuries. The following day, Crackers took down the details of the investigation from the police computer and bribes and threats were made to the victim to drop the charges. £10,000 was offered to remain silent. From the listening devices in Crackers' car, they spoke of what they would do to the bank manager and his family will the female scream and set aside 90 minutes to make him cooperate in full. The five men planned to stage a roadworks scene near the victim's home as a distraction for the kidnap. When they moved in, police uncovered false registration plates, industrial gaffer tape, dust masks, a balaclava, zip ties, industrial ear protectors and the van to be used in the plot. The DPS heard them planning the route, what time they should commit the offence, when there would be less police on the street, and what CCTV cameras would be looking at them. Caracas had every camera marked, and if there was watched live, or recording to be viewed later. The DPS was fully aware that there was a real chance of violence being involved. The victims would have their mouths taped over, and hands tied and people with balaclavas would be coming through their door. The DPS had to move and perform arrests and didn't let them get anywhere near the victim as the consequences would have been too grave. The people that he planned to commit the offence with had nothing to do with Turkish organised crime. They were friends from school days. They were clean skins. They had no previous criminal convictions against them. Caracas conspired with Richmond Darko who was 25 years old, Ijiro, 24 years old, Jamie Lowe, 25 years old, and Gokhan Karu, 24 years old, to kidnap the Lloyd's TSB manager based in London in an attempt to steal the money. Crackers pleaded guilty at Blackfriars Crown Court. Crackers received 10 years for conspiracy to kidnap, two years for misconduct in a public office, and one year for assault. 
with the sentences to run consecutively. He was sentenced to 13 years. The other members of his gang also received major sentences of between 8 and 10 years. <laughs>